might be able to tell by the fact that he is still asleep. They are nocturnal animals. So usually if we see them out of the water, it's a little bit closer to nighttime when they'll do their grazing along the riverbanks. When the hippos come out of the water, they also have their own noise that they can use to communicate with one another. It is officially known as a wheeze honk. And each hippo has their own unique wheeze honk, so they can always tell who's talking. And the more dominant the hippo, the more likely they are to be listened to. Now with this hippo laying out in the sun, he may look like he's getting a little bit sunburned. He is a little pink, but they actually don't get sunburned because they instead secrete kind of a pinkish goo. And that actually acts as a natural form of sunblock for them, but it does give them that pinkish tint. When the hippos are in the water, they can also be a little tricky for us to spot sometimes, which may sound a little silly since they weigh between four to 5,000 pounds. But being that big also makes them too dense to be able to swim. So when they're in the water, they sink all the way down to the bottom and they can hold their breath down there for up to eight minutes at a time. The gray and white birds that we're seeing over here on this island are the pink back pelican. Now the pelican are pretty famous for those pouches that they have on their beaks, but they serve some really important purposes for them. Not just to eat and drink with though, birds actually don't sweat, so what the pelican can do instead is wiggle that bottom pouch back and forth. That'll allow them to circulate air around their bodies, almost like they've got their own little built-in fan to help them cool down with instead. As we keep traveling out towards the savannah, we are also going to need to cross the river on the bridge that's coming up up ahead here. And as we do, it is really important that everyone remain fully seated because on the reserve, this is actually known as Prop Bridge. And it gets that name for a really good reason. It is usually a really common spot to see Nile crocodile hanging out. And it looks like there's quite a few of them over here on our left hand side today. Now the crocodiles are one of the animals here on the reserve that we really don't want to mess with. Fully grown, they'll be about 16 feet long, and even on the small side, they still weigh around 500 pounds. They can also eat about half that body weight in a single meal if they needed to. But the good news for us is that they really only do that when food's going to be a little bit more scarce. Because when they eat that much food in one meal, they can go between a week or sometimes even as long as a month before they really need to eat again. Crocodiles are also animals known for their jaw strength. That they're, that they're awake, they only spend about 30 minutes at rest. Here's your cattle. A little bit further up ahead here, we are going to see some Ancoli cattle over here. Now the Ancoli cattle have those really big horns, but their horns are not quite as heavy as they look at first glance because they're not made out of a solid material. Now their horns, again, are not quite as heavy as they look at first glance. They're actually made out of a honeycomb-like structure, not a solid material. They do still weigh around 15 pounds each, though, which is definitely a lot heavier than anything that I'd want on my head all day. But they don't really seem to mind too much, and that's probably because their horns are going to be what helps them regulate their body temperature. Their veins run all the way up to the tips of those horns, allowing them to circulate blood around inside to help it cool down before they circulate it back down to their bodies. Now we're also seeing a den over here on our left hand side. And dens like this one are usually really great spots to see predators hanging out. Now the hyenas, we've got a couple of misconceptions about them actually. The first is that they are scavengers that just kind of pick off of other animals' leftovers, but they are actually predators. What they hunt though will depend on if they've got their clan with them or not. When they're hunting solo, they'll go after smaller prey like birds. They won't go after larger prey like the wildebeest or zebra until they've got their clans with them. Now this is also a pair of wildebeest that we're seeing over here as well. Now wildebeest have one of the largest migration patterns out of any animal in the world. So this is actually a pretty small herd that we're seeing here. During their migration season, they'll travel between 500 and 1,000 miles together. And that's already pretty impressive on its own. But during that time, they'll also have about 1.5 million members of that herd as well. We got a really great look at this giraffe tower up ahead here. Now as we do start to get closer, the giraffes may look like an animal that has horns, but what we see up on the top of their heads is actually something different called ossicone. 
When the baby giraffes are first born, their ossicones are made entirely out of cartilage so they can lay flat to help make the birthing process a little bit easier. And as they start to get older, they'll start to harden into bone, eventually becoming part of the giraffe's skull through a process known as ossification. We're also seeing some Patterson's eland over here on the left-hand side as well. The eland are going to be the largest species of antelope. They're actually going to be about six feet tall, and a full-grown male will weigh around 2,000 pounds. Now this section looks like it's going to be two females and the baby that we're seeing. I see one up there. Now we can usually tell when elephants are on the move through the reserve when we see trees knocked down like we are in this area here. Because the elephants don't always have the same height advantage as what the giraffes have since they only get to be about 14 feet tall. But what they do have on their side instead is going to be their strength and they are strong enough to bulldoze the trees down if they need to. Elephants also need to rely on a lot of their resources when they eat because they do actually need to eat between three to 500 pounds worth of food during the course of their day and drink around 50 gallons worth of water. Once they can reach what they need though, the elephants can then use their trunks a lot like how we would use our hands because their trunks are going to be prehensile so they can use them to pick up their food, their water, or anything else they might need. Now even though the elephants do eat so much food during the course of their day, that area that that moves in it looks like it's actually been pretty clear of trees for a little while now. So I'm hoping that's going to be a really great sign that more members of the herd may have just moved a little farther up ahead and we might be able to catch up to them as well. It's not always too unusual though to sometimes see one elephant kind of doing its own thing though. It probably just means that it was a male because the herds are going to be matriarchal societies. So females and babies all stay in one herd together. But then as males get a little bit older, usually around the time they're 12 or 13, that's around the time that they leave the herd and go off either on their own or they may sometimes find other males that they can form a small bachelor herd with instead. Since the males typically leave the herd at around that age of 13, that's also kind of when researchers consider elephants to reach adulthood, giving them one of the longest childhoods out of any of the animal species. I do see some tusk marks and footprints in that clay pit there. Now that is usually another really great sign of elephant activity for us. Elephants like to pass through that clay pit like we just did for a couple different reasons. The clay is active and do their hunting during the day. And they've got a couple of advantages that help with that. They do have black markings under their eyes that help reflect the sunlight and keep it out of their eyes while they hunt. They're also the fastest land animal in the world, reaching a top speed of around 60 miles an hour. They can reach that speed in about three seconds, but it's also more of a sprint for them, and so they can only maintain it for a couple hundred yards or so.
at all times have been securely locked on those coordinates. That's right. <laughs> See? Securely locked. Access denied. Of course. We were just talking about seatbelts. Plug them in. Use them. It can get kind of choppy out there, so keep your hands and arms inside the vehicle at all times. Flash photography? I wouldn't. It alters the homing signal, and that's not good. Oh, and one more thing. Those locked coordinates. We're in. Now, here's the drill. You follow the homing signal to the iguana knot, then I'll enlarge the transport field, and boom, you're back with one additional passenger extra large. And don't worry about that asteroid. You'll be in and out of there before it even breaks the atmosphere. Trust me, what could go wrong? Hey, it's me again. Remember, only you guys are going. Let's go get that dino. Computer, what are you tracking? Skyracosaurus. Not our dino. Warning, meteor shower in range. Just little one. <laughs> 